No dispute now, though. Stephen Carroll is definitely here for the business news. Good to have you with us, Stephen. There are new tariffs, aren't there, facing uh, French and German exports to the US from today? That's right. They're relating to a long-running dispute between the United States and the European Union over subsidies given to the plane makers Boeing and Airbus. Now, the World Trade Organization gave both sides the right to levy tariffs on each other's goods because of those illegal subsidies. US has had tariffs in place since 2019, but at the end of December announced that it was expanding the list of goods affected. It's bad news for the aviation and wine sectors, as Georgina Robertson now reports. Turning up the heat on a feud that has been simmering for nearly 17 years. The United States is adding more products to European imports it's hitting with tariffs. Aircraft components like fuselage and wing parts are now on the list, subject to a 15% levy. French aviation giant Airbus has said that these tariffs are counterproductive in every way, as they will hit its factory in Alabama that uses imported parts, but also the production of Boeing planes in the US. The European wine industry is also facing more pain. Washington is expanding its 25% punitive duty to include all non-sparkling wines, now including over 14% proof, as well as cognacs and some other brandies. The existing tariffs brought in in October 2019 are already blamed for a 700 million euro drop in sales. The stakes are high as the US is the largest export market for EU's winemakers. Nearly half a French cognac is destined for the United States. According to the French Wine and Spirits Export Federation, these new tariffs will lead to a further 300 million euros of lost sales. The coronavirus has already hit the aviation and hospitality industries hard. Both sides are hoping for a resolution. This dispute will be one of the tests of relations between Washington and Brussels under President Biden, though they will also have to face the contentious issue of tariffs raised as a result of France's digital tax. Now, dozens of major companies in the United States have stopped political donations. This is after uh, last week's violence in Washington. In particular, they're suspending or reviewing donations to Republicans who had objected to last week's certification of the election. The companies involved here include the telecoms firms AT&T and Comcast, which both gave over $2 million in donations in the 2020 electoral cycle. The likes of UPS, Facebook and Google have suspended all political donations, and so too have Citibank, JP Morgan Chase and BlackRock. The greeting card company Hallmark has even asked two Republican senators who objected to the Electoral College votes to refund their PAC donations made in previous elections. This is companies try to come to terms with the events of last week. Not surprising. What's happening on the market since, Stephen? European shares starting the day up at the start of trading. Shares in the French car maker Renault up around seven tenths of one percent after it published its sales figures for last year. Overall sales for Renault down twenty six percent in Europe, but the company reporting a strong start to twenty twenty one. That's the picture across London, Paris and Frankfurt on the Asian markets, a couple of different forces driving trading in Asia today. Hopes for more stimulus in the United States, providing some optimism for investors. We had the Nikkei climb to its highest level in decades. Cosby and Sol, meanwhile, dipping into the red. That's as investors take profits out from recent gains in the market there. Now, the carmaker Ford uh, announced it's closing its operations. Uh, this is in Brazil, isn't it? That's right. Three factories are to close in the country. It'll affect around 5,000 workers there. The company says that it's part of an $11 billion restructuring plan globally. Car sales in Brazil, though, fell by more than a quarter last year, and they're not expected to recover until 2023. Ford has operated plants in Brazil for more than a century the news sparking political controversy in the country. The Speaker of the Lower House of Parliament saying the move showed a lack of credibility in the Brazilian government. Now, this last story, uh, I have to say, does not surprise me that much, Stephen. Uh, massive losses, um, this perhaps not surprisingly, is uh, from one of the world's biggest cruise ship operators. You know the travel industry, of course, one of the hardest hit by the pandemic and cruise ship operators, of course, among them. Carnival Cruises, they say, is that has reported losses of $2.2 billion for the last three months of 2020. Compare that to a year previously when they made $400 million in profit. Carnival's main line has suspended all sailings until the end of March. Health authorities in the United States have set strict conditions for allowing companies to resume cruises there. That includes running mock sailings and applying for a health certificate at least 60 days in advance. Carnival has been able to run some cruises around Europe over the summer months. Last summer, uh, the company says it's now hoping to resume operations on all ships by the end of the year. But it does seem like, as you say, it's a particularly complicated one mm. with the coronavirus. So I think it could be a difficult 
operation to try and restart. At least they're being honest and saying the end of the year and not the middle of it, I mm. think. Anyway, Stephen, thank you very much, Stephen, with business.